Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Life is Strange. When we left off last time, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on. It, We've got this whole... We had a conversation with David Madsen, and he seems like maybe he's not as bad as he's seemed up to this point. He might genuinely care about the kids. But then we saw Kate ran off crying after a conversation with Mr. Jefferson, who seems a lot more like a jerk than I... I don't know why all the students like him so much, like... He's telling Max to stay outside of things and always take the picture and put herself first. And he just, I don't know, he seems kind of arrogant and unfeeling. But, uh, and he said that Kate may have brought her own troubles on herself with the viral video. Like, what a thing to say. But she ran off crying. She was out in the rain. And then we saw David Madsen hiding behind a tree taking pictures of her. So I don't know what that's all about. It's so weird. Right now we're in class. Uh, I... His class just feels kind of pretentious to me. Maybe it's just because I'm not a photography person myself. Like, I, I like photography, and I, I enjoy a nice picture. But I don't know, listening to the things this guy says sometimes. But let's catch up with our journal. So this is back about when we were at the Two Whales. So much drama, and I haven't even finished my breakfast. Finally, Chloe showed up, more bubbly than I would have thought after almost getting killed in a bathroom yesterday. It makes me happy to see her smile. But that smile meant trouble, since all she really wanted was for me to show off my rewind power. So I did, and I have to admit, I felt like a total boss. Except I did start feeling weak and woozy the more I rewound. I even got a nosebleed, which kind of freaked me out. Chloe wants more, so she demanded we go to her top secret lair. She still had to get pissed off at me because I dared to answer Kate's call. I'm not a fan of Chloe's petulant side. She tried to make me feel like an ass, but screw that. Kate was so happy I answered, I actually felt worse for her. Chloe has to know I can have two friends at once. And this is actually an excellent point, Max. Whoops, I did not mean to leave the journal. Alright, let's get back to it. Right. There we go. Just when I thought shit couldn't get crazier, Chloe took me to her secret lair, the city dump. Perfect for Halloween, like where the vehicle and appliance ghosts of Arcadia Bay come to rot and rust. Urban dystopia porn. But instead of taking cool photos, Chloe had me do some silly kind of fun gun tricks. No, it was really irresponsible and dumb. Until the guy Chloe owes money to showed up, some skeevy guy called Frank. He demanded Chloe pay him back, or else. I was shocked that he wasn't the loan shark I had expected, but I could literally feel his bad vibe. I still can't see how my best friend ended up involved with a loser like Frank. Things got truly crazy when Frank took Chloe's gun, or should I say David's gun, and now we have to worry about one more lunatic after Chloe, and maybe me. Well, this is after, to be fair, after we pointed the gun at him. Now, he, had, he was waving a knife at Chloe, this is a good point, but she owes him a lot of money that she was never intending to repay as well. That's, I mean, that doesn't justify waving a knife at her, but everybody's making the wrong choices here. Chloe really flipped out when she saw that Frank was wearing one of Rachel Amber's bracelets, which was awfully suspicious. That means we definitely have another suspect. This is so not how I intended to spend my time back in Arcadia Bay. After all that drama drama, Chloe and I ended up taking a walk along the tracks deep in the woods. We both needed to hear nothing but the sounds of nature and wildlife. I was shaking inside from our encounter with Frank, and though Chloe fronts tough, I could tell she was shaking too. She told me everything about Frank, which explains why she was trying to blackmail Nathan. It shocks me that the girl I grew up with watching Spongebob ended up in such a scary orbit. Still, I felt safer with her at my side, and I was glad we had a moment of peace. So it probably wasn't the best idea to lay down in the tracks and wax about life, etc. As Chloe's leg got caught in the rail just as the goddamn train showed up. Yeah, it was a pretty stupid idea to lay down on the railroad tracks. I, I guess I can't complain about it. I mean, I used to do... Kids do stupid things like that. I used to put pennies on the railroad tracks and stand, you know, stand what I thought to be a safe distance away, and then you can go up after the train passes and you can get the flattened pennies. We used to, like, walking home from school, it crossed over the railroad tracks, and there were always a bunch of us that would, like, follow along the railroad track. I mean, kids just do dumb things like that, but... Man. All right. Of course, I was off trying to take a photo for my portfolio, and then I had another quick flash of my tornado vision. I could see it, almost feel it, tearing the sky apart. My head felt like it was exploding, like in the 80s film scanners. Just as fast as the vision came in, it disappeared. I may be in denial about what this apocalyptic image means, or doesn't. Then I heard Chloe screaming for help, and I was shitting kittens. Her foot was stuck in the damn rail, and naturally the train was coming around the mountain. I was pretty proud of myself for coming up with a drastic, if not destructive, solution to saving Chloe once again, but just in case this journal ever falls into the wrong hands, it's going to remain our BFF secret. So there. Our morning adventure over, Chloe dropped me off back at campus. She was so sweet and said that this had been the best week of her life, despite everything. 
That made me feel so awesome. Chloe really sees us like we're taking over the world. But what if I hadn't been able to use my rewind power to get her off of the tracks? Chloe might have to lower her expectations, and so will I. Speaking of expectations, David Nadson stopped to talk to me without being a total prick. I thought he was going to bust me for taking the heat for Chloe's weed, but we just talked a little, and for the first time I felt kind of sorry for David. He is a veteran. I know he probably saw awful things in combat. He said he doesn't want to fight with Chloe or me, but all the shit he's pulled in treating Kate like she's a suspect just makes it hard to get along. But I promise to try, for world peace. Something odd happened, as if everything happening isn't bizarro. But I saw Kate having an intense conversation with Mr. Jefferson, and she ended up practically running away from him in tears. I wish I could have casually asked, oh, by the way, what's up with Kate? Like he would tell me anyway. I know Kate treats Jefferson like he's an apostle or something, and so do you usually, Max. So what did he say to make her so upset? Just when I was feeling good about Chloe and me, I walk into Jefferson's class and see Nathan and Victoria actually sitting on my desk. Unreal. Asshole bookends. So, who's near here? Ah, Frank. I'll never forget Frank, if only because he's the first and last person I will ever aim a gun at. How did Chloe end up in this sketchy drug dealer's orbit? The weird thing is that when I first saw him threatening Chloe in the junkyard, I was more shocked how uncreepy he looked. I expected some try-hard gangster, but he looked more like a dumpster-diving troll. Which I guess he kind of is, since we were on his turf, testing out my rewind skills for Chloe's amusement. Though he didn't look like a serial killer, his vibe, aura, energy, whatever, was bad. I could literally feel the hair on my arms prickling. He wanted the money Chloe owed him, so it didn't make sense he would hurt her, but I wasn't going to take a chance. So yes, I actually threatened him with David's gun. Ridiculous. Fortunately, none of us ended up like reservoir dogs, and I saw that maybe Frank isn't as scary as I thought. But I don't want Chloe near him ever again. Since he was wearing one of Rachel Amber's bracelets for WTF reasons, I doubt Chloe will be partying with him anymore. But he's at the top of our suspect list now. Oh, and Joyce. A little star by her as well. Talking to Joyce Price after five years was almost as intense as seeing Chloe again, especially right back in ye old Two Whales Diner. That clinking of silverware and the smell of sizzling bacon rewound me back to being a kid, hanging out there with my parents for breakfast. I remember her always smiling at Chloe, even in mischief. Doubt she smiles at her hijinks now, but they still banter like mother and daughter. I moved to Seattle so soon after William died that I never saw how it affected Joyce. I'm glad she's not pissed at me for being selfish and never looking back. I still remember the last time Chloe and I saw him alive. I wonder how often Joyce relives that day. That's the worst kind of rewind, one you can't control. But if I could go back to that moment, what would I do? I can only imagine how Joyce ended up with David Madsen. Talk about opposites. You can tell she loves him, disturbing as that sounds. Maybe she just wanted a more structured life for herself. Obviously, it didn't work out that way with Chloe. I hope they both treat her right. Joyce deserves the best. Our pictures. No, we got some missing. Hopefully we just haven't come across them yet and we'll still have the opportunity. And then a message from Chloe. All right. Max, wish you had popped a cap in Frank's ass instead of giving him the gun. I did not give him the gun and no, Chloe, I do not wish that and neither do you. Is it too late to rewind? Are you, are you seriously making jokes about I should have killed somebody? I, someone that I don't know, someone that you actually owed money to anyhow, so that part is kind of on you, and then with a dot you weren't intending on honoring. And Thank reality TV Just for imagine the consequences. In the end, we can only blame ourselves for participating. Speaking of participation... I guess Kate will miss class now. I'm worried about her. Like Max Caulfield, for example, who I know can't wait to enter, right? I'm sure you read the syllabus like it was a Harry Potter book, so you must know today we're studying chiaroscuro. That beautiful word about the contrast between light and dark. The shadow play that gives photography such visual power. It's basic yin and yang. Black and white images are effective precisely because of their contrasts. Although we don't technically see in mind. Yo! Some... Whoop. The crazy shit is going down at the girl's dorm! Check Zachary, it. do not come into my class like that ever again. Okay, let's go check it. Listen, everybody remains seated. You're not a chance. Dismissed. Oh, it's gonna be something Is bad with that? Kit. Is this for real? It flipped out. I didn't think she was that messed up. That's Kate, isn't it? She's suicidal because of all this, and nobody's taking it seriously. 
Yep, there she is. Oh no. Is that Kate? Kate! No! Oh god. She can't die. She can't. All right. But what are we going to do about this, Max? We have to go further back. Not again. Not now. I have to try something. I won't be able to rewind again and again. Okay, we gotta go back way further is what we gotta do, Max. Even though it's taking a lot out of us. But, did we just freeze everybody? Okay, Keep go get her. Going, Max. You can do it. Birds in the way, really? All right, go around them. Come on. All right, through here then. Maybe right through here. Okay, we gotta get up to where she is. Because we can't just try to like catch her or something. That would just end in disaster for us both. To the roof. Yes. Yeah, all the signs there, and Mr. Jefferson's gonna say, Well maybe she brought this on herself. Call out to her. Oh. What are you doing here, Max? Don't do this. Stop. Don't come near me. Don't do this, now. Kate. It won't work. I don't have any power. Well, you have to now use your I words have to then. Do this by myself? Max, seriously, don't come near me. I will jump. I know, but Okay. But don't. Okay. I'm right here. Kate, please. Oh, Max, I know you want to help me. I do. I love that you stepped up to David, but it doesn't matter now. Nothing matters. You, you matter. matter. And not just to me. I do want to believe that. Kate, your life is still yours. And we can get through this together. Let me help. I'm glad to hear you worry about me. That makes me feel better. Of course I worry. You're my friend, Kate. I did feel better talking to you on the phone. I always feel like you really listen. Please come down. Kate, please trust me. Come stand by me, okay? I can help you now. I know I can. This morning I erased the web link to the video. It was written on the shower room mirror. Are you serious? Well, yeah. Thank you so much. The fact that you don't care about that video and would come up here to stop me means a lot. I care about you because I believe you were drugged. We will find out who did this and make them pay. You sound so persuasive, Max. If only... What? Kate, I believe you. Will you believe me? Please, you don't have to do this. Max, I'm in a nightmare and I can't wake up uh, unless I put myself to sleep. No, no. Then everybody at Blackwell can post pics of my body. I'm horny on the internet forever. No wonder they call it a web. Nothing can ever get out. Like my video. I wish I could go back in time and erase everything. Uh, okay, I don't want to say everybody will forget because she's not going to buy that. There are billions of videos. But I think maybe be strong. Because even though there are billions of videos and everybody will forget, it's the truth. It'll blow over. There will always be something else. She's not going to believe that in the moment. I'm... The pregnancy test that I missed in the first episode. Whose was it? Was it Kate? She's, she's not pregnant from what happened, is she? Maybe I'm putting the wrong things together. Maybe that... I mean, that would explain why she's feeling so utterly desperate here. Um, Kate, this is our chance to beat the bullies. 
That's the only way we can win against them. Can we really, Max? I don't believe in miracles anymore either. Now I do. You're part of the reason why. If you come down with me, I can tell you more. You're such a good person, Max. Even if you're full of crap. <laughs> but I'll come with you. Oh, thank goodness. You're my friend. Okay. Forever. Can we hug on it? No. Nobody cares about me. Nobody. Um. I saw that cute photo of you with your sisters in your room this morning. I can see how much your little sister loves you by her smile. That's Lynn. She's only ten. She does have the best smile ever. If you do this, she I won't smile to again. I see her sad. It's okay. What are you talking about? You saved me from talking in class. Okay. That was pretty intense. And this is why everyone needed to take that video thing Now, I know seriously. today was difficult for everybody. But I'm so proud of the way Blackwell pulled together to save a young girl's life. Who pulled together? Of course, you're quite a hero for getting Kate to come down, Max. Thank you. I didn't do much. She's modest. Like a real hero. Yeah. Real hero. As principal of Blackwell Academy, I take my duties seriously. I take the well-being of every student more seriously. What happened today should never happen in a hall of wisdom and knowledge. No, it shouldn't. Mr. Madsen. As our head of security here, those roof doors should always be locked. That's just standard operating procedure. They were not. But more important than that is the culture that was allowed to grow that led up to this. All of the bullying, all of the, the constant crap rained down on Kate. People like Mr. Jefferson saying maybe she brought this on herself. That's what started all that. That's what really led to this. It's not about a door. If the door had been locked, then she would have found another way. That's not the key thing here. And that is indeed your responsibility. Mr. Jefferson, I know you can't be expected to know what your students are going through. But she came to you. But Kate has assisted you in class, so you should have known something was amiss. Yeah, you should have. Mr. Prescott, since you are responsible for the Vortex Club parties, and since Miss March did attend your last party, you'll have to answer some more questions. Miss Caulfield, why exactly were you on the roof with Kate Marsh? Did she tell you her plan? Or anything at all? Please, tell us everything. Okay. Uh, Nathan. All I know is that Kate was at a party and Nathan dosed her. She got wasted and kissed some boys on a viral video without a clue. I dosed her? <laughs> without yeah. a clue. Have you seen the video? Whatever. Kate was loaded and You're a liar. The field. You told Kate you took her to the emergency room. I said I was going to take her to the ER. She sobered up eventually. Bullshit. Yeah. Something happened to her and you know it. How about we talk about you waving a gun in the girl's hey, bathroom? that's total slander. No, I it's could not. Sue you and this school so fast. I already have a personal lawyer. Careful, Mr. Prescott. I have been told of this alleged gun incident, and I have to admit that the video in question was sent to me by multiple. Oh, is he maybe taking it seriously now? Me. Good. And since Mr. Prescott does appear prominently in the video and was responsible for the party. I have no choice hey, but hey. to suspend him until further notice. Awesome. Whatever. See you in court. Excuse me. I think Max and Nathan need a break before we grill them further. Now we can keep a going. A friend and student just tried to kill herself. They don't need this forum right now. Yes, I'm kind of devastated right now. I'd like to be with my family. No. All right, Miss Caulfield, please sign here to confirm what you've told us. I'll continue this investigation from there. My head is killing me, but... I think I can use my power again. No, I, th I think I'm pretty happy with this. I don't want to point fingers at, at 
Mr. Uh, Dave Madsen or it, even though I think Mr. Jefferson was a piece of crap for not being sensitive to her, neither of them are really the problem. They, the main problem was the party. His bullying and his lack of compassion were just contributing factors after the main event. That's, that's what really started all this. So, yeah, sign it. Well, I think we know less now than when we started. We'll be assisting the police with further inquiries. I know this has been a stressful day. I wish I had the power to change it all for the better. So thank you for coming in. Hey, it could have been a whole lot worse. Although Nathan is going to be really gunning for me now. It was literally slow motion as I grabbed her hand. And then I could feel her grabbing mine. Max, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Ever! You reached out, she reached out, hugs, tears, applause. Like a superhero. Not quite. Look at me. I'm a mess. You're glowing. Seriously, a human halo. I'm pretty sure you earned your wings today. I'm so worried about Kate. Yeah. She did try to kill herself. <laughs> All over a video. It's not Viral just the video. Is the right word. Like a disease. It was everything so that came it. with it. Just one. And a half times. Warren, I don't mean to sound weird, but there's something ominous going on at Blackwell. Today proves that. And I'm working on proof that Kate Marsh is connected to Rachel Amber. Somehow. Along with Nathan and Mr. Madsen. I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but I wouldn't doubt it. Nathan did scare me yesterday, and Madsen is a straight-up dickhead. So, what do you think is really happening? Well, I think our main bad what guy the hell is, is Nathan this? Prescott. The weather confirms this weird day. I feel that chill. What, an eclipse out of Max, nowhere? there was no eclipse scheduled today. I would know. I would. I believe you, Warren. I believe anything this week. Well, snow, an unforeseen eclipse. Ooh, that's David Madsen's. How's he tangled up in all this now? First, it seems pretty clear that he was a bad guy, but now I'm not sure. Maybe he really is trying to help in his own way. I'm suspicious of Mr. Jefferson now. I don't know, after his conversation with Kate and then he's telling Max that maybe she brought this on herself, I don't... Something to do with Rachel Amber disappearing. Is he some? Hmm. But then Frank has her bracelet. So what's that all about? Victoria's crying. Is he going to do the same thing to her that he did to Kate? Is she crying or is she just kind of dazed and drugged now? Frank and his dog. I don't know. Um, it could be. He could be a bad guy. It's certainly seeming like it, but maybe not. Maybe Rachel legitimately did give him the bracelet. Again, he just seems kind of too obvious to be the one at fault, so. Oh, good. She is in a hospital. Alright, yeah. She'd have to be under observation after that, wouldn't she? I think it would be required. Of 
Chloe, we should be friends with Kate. You would probably like her too. Sorry about Kate, this clip freaks me out. Let's find out what's going on. Together. Let's draw Kate into the loop. She has every reason to be on our side. And maybe more friends would help Chloe out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Rachel Kelly. This is David Madsen, right? What's he doing with these files? That's kind of super creepy. I don't know what to make of that. I, that's a really strange thing to have a bunch of files on a bunch of girls at the school you work at that's really, really creepy. I'm trying to give him some benefit of the doubt. We had a decent conversation today. Maybe he really does care about Chloe, does care about Joyce, but... I don't know. And again, because I know... Because I know it's a game and it wants to keep things exciting for us, right? So, again, this is like, okay, well, this obviously indicates him but is this just to lead us off the real trail is this just to to keep us guessing maybe there will end up being some semi-legitimate explanation for him keeping those folders maybe he's just an extremely paranoid guy but not the kind of guy who's actually gonna harm someone i don't know when he when we had time frozen and we were running towards the building to save kate he looked like he was trying to run towards the building so i think I think ideally he he did want to save her, is my guess, but what was he taking all the pictures for? I don't know, I don't know. There's still not at this point any real, I mean we know Nathan Prescott's a bad guy, but I, there's obviously going to be more to it than that. And we still at this point don't really have a clear idea what happened to Rachel? I am wondering if that scene with Victoria and Nathan was, um, I, I thought she was crying at first, but now I'm wondering maybe it was just like she's feeling all woozy, like maybe he's drugged her as well. And then maybe our next episode is going to be her basically in the same boat as Kate, which if she is, given how she treated Kate, I don't know that we'll be able to try and I would like to talk to her and help her if it does work out that way. But I could see her being really resentful of any attempt at help just because she's going to she's going to feel so betrayed by it and ashamed of the way that she'd been acting I think it's going to make her really prickly so we'll see, we'll see and I might be totally wrong, maybe that's not what it was showing us at all maybe she was crying about something, maybe she's just tired I don't know it's very interesting though I'm also a little bit concerned about the hug that Warren gave Max at the end there, because if, if she doesn't want any kind of relationship like that it's and, and maybe I'm overreacting. Friends can give friends hugs, but it's it's just that we know he has an interest in her that he's hoping will be returned. So potentially an awkward situation. Maybe not. It might not even go in that direction. Oh, this means that I missed like four picture opportunities. Dang it. Ugh, I wonder what else I missed. Well, when the credits are done rolling, it'll, it'll show me, I'm sure. That's a bummer. I kind of want to go back and get them, but I, I'm afraid that if I do, it would affect the playthrough, and I don't. I, I feel like I need to stick with the choices that I've made. I don't want to do anything that will change the aspects of the story. So it's probably something that just on my own time I'll have to go do when it's all said and done. Oof. 
roof and the credits just keep on a rolling and rolling. I wonder if it's possible to fail to save Kate. That would have really sucked. I'm still up in the air about Rachel. Like, I don't know if we can reasonably expect her to be alive at the end of all of this. I mean, and I, another thing I'm really worried about now. So Max is getting all these nosebleeds and everything. Obviously, that's part of the story, but it makes me want to, like incidents when I was in um, Chloe's house and we rewound to save the bird. Do I only get a limited amount of rewinds? Like, is the game keeping track of how much I use it? And so sometimes it will be unavailable if I. At a major decision when I'd really want it because I used it too much up on other stuff. Minor decisions before that? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. So maybe I need to be really careful about how often I rewind. So that means the scene with Warren, like, we wait, if that is the case, if we have limited rewinds, we wasted a ton of rewinds with him just to help him with some goofy science project, and I don't even know what the point of that was. Like, he made a big explosion and then just said, okay, there you go. Like, oh my Gosh, what if that used up three rewinds that I could have used for something else? Maybe not. Maybe I get unlimited on the minor things and then it's just unimportant other issues like the, the Kate scene. Oh, I don't know. I was feeling all rewind happy go lucky at first, but now I'm kind of nervous. Which makes sense. It is a very strong power, and it's something that should be treated with respect. And not just used for goofy, inconsequential stuff, like being able to tell Warren whether to use sodium or potassium. Now it does make me... What if, if I hadn't done that scene with Warren, would I, had, would I have had any rewinds for the Kate scene? Or no? Maybe still not. But... What if I would have? That would have been terrible. Wasting them on something unimportant when there's a suicide to prevent. All right, here we go told Kate to go to the police. Most people didn't, told her to wait for more proof? No, that option was the worst. Oh, when I said that to her and she was so broken hearted, no, go to the police. Give them what you've got, even if it's not much. As long as we get the a police report started and there's some kind of file on Nathan Prescott, the more incidents that accumulate, the more it will tell an overall picture. Let's see. Most of us did answer Kate's call, because why wouldn't you? Hmm. Most people tried to shoot Frank. Okay. And yeah, it is possible to not save Kate's life. Oh, thank goodness we did. And almost everybody blamed Nathan because he's totally the guy. All right. What have we got here? Did water the plant. Helped Alyssa. Erase the link to Kate's video. Oh, 95%. Almost everybody did. Weren't friendly with Taylor. Oh, what did I do with Taylor? Rejected Warren's invitation. No. Wrote a message. Tampered with the rail tracks. Gained entry to the party. Oh, that one was a little more evenly split-ish. Helped and didn't help Warren. Told on David to Mr. Jefferson. Okay. Oh, it must be our next time on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back next time. We will start episode three, Chaos Theory.